So open banking means um, the ability to share access to your bank account data. Uh, so that's literally the, the payment information that you keep in your bank. Um, open finance is the ability to share more than that. So this would mean the ability to share access to your investment data, to your mortgage information, and even beyond that, to, to inform insurance information. So open finance is kind of like evolution of open banking. It, it, it's going to go much deeper than that. I think they are also hopefully start seeing kind of bank to bank data sharing based on open banking networks. So the purpose of open banking was to create more competition in the market. Um, so the regulators in, in Europe and UK, um, they, they invented open banking regulation so that there would be more challenges to existing uh, existing banks. And uh, it's absolutely working today. So what we see is like we have hundreds of, of um, uh, companies that um, have um, access to bank account information and provide new services to end consumers. Um, and this is all we need. The, the revolutionary part of this is that there's more competition in the markets. And if there's more competition, there will be more new uh, unique solutions out there. Banks have always been the one-stop shop for all financial services, but now that's changing, right? Because the digital way of interacting and shopping has changed, right? The way we interact with our bank and manage our finances has changed. Switching is easy. Opening a new account doesn't take any more weeks. It takes seconds. Applying for a new credit card doesn't really mean that you have to go to your bank and apply for it. You're no longer printing your bank statements, which is when my career in banking startup we used to do. So one clear massive benefit that is there for the end consumer, which would drive the adoption of open banking, is that access to credit is faster and easier for the end user now. In the financial landscape used to be kind of one size fits all. I think open banking is bringing in much more kind of personalized experience that allows for the customers' finances to serve them and financial products to serve them rather than them try and fit into what they see as the most relevant thing. Um, open banking allows um, for real distribution of value chains. So we're going to talk about um, value chains that are provided by specialized players um, instead of everything delivered by one bank or one player. One of the most important ones is that I think open banking is actually giving banks the ability to uh, uh, provide new offers and services to their customers in partnership with fintechs. So for example, one of the things that they could be doing uh, is offering buy now, pay later services through third parties that provide open banking. Payments is, is a really, is a really big one. Um, account to account payments, for example, has entered into the mainstream and it's really creating a, a great opportunity for open banking to, to become the go-to infrastructure for, for underpinning digital payments in the UK and across Europe. I think fundamentally it's still in its infancy and uh, there's still a lot of opportunity in the market and, and adoption that needs to happen. When open banking first came around, people thought that the problem that it was solving was now you can see your bank account alongside your other bank account. And that has is proven that has very little value for the end customer. With 4 million consumers in the UK currently accessing book, open banking services and, and products, there's been um, some take up. Uh, but again, we want to see it in the tens of millions as opposed to just a, a, a few millions. I think the benefits are reaching those people who are already on a much more mature journey to a more digital banking experience. The end customer shouldn't really know what is open banking. They should just have a value exchange, which is if you connect to your bank here, you will get this value back, whether that's a more accurate loan or a better investment product, or the filling out of this form will be 50 or 80% faster and more accurate. It's similar to how end customers didn't know what a what the Google Maps API was, they were just using Uber, if you know what I mean, and they were going, I was getting a cab straight away, which I, I didn't yes, used to get before. They shouldn't really know what the underlying technology is. They should just see the value straight away. The good news is that the adopters of um, open banking have been people who've needed it the most. So people who are having issues, perhaps saving, um, or, or you know, they want to reduce their expenditure. They've really taken to these personal finance management apps, for example. In a lot of cases, there are excellent services, like for example, financial wellness apps that are are seeing good uptake amongst consumers because consumers see the benefit of 
seeing all their finances in one place, even though they, uh, they source them from various providers. But the tricky thing is, uh, I think the experiences that are being offered through open banking are still nascent. They're still evolving. They'll, they're still not quite up to par uh, with some of the other experiences that banks or traditional payment service providers can offer at the moment. The benefits for the consumers are only starting to, to, to play out. But at the end, choice, um, um, information, um, freedom to choose from best offers um, that are not restricted to local or, or specialized providers that you have um, um, at, at your hands um, are going to um, strengthen the consumer base and allow them to really get the best they can get. Open banking is a great start. We've really laid the foundations, particularly here in the UK, in terms of um, having the right standards in place and, and getting banks to, um, you know, adhere to these. We've got a long way, long way to go um, to get there. And I think uh, part of the challenge is getting the adoption of it across all the banks and making it kind of uh, fully accessible. So arguably, open finance is already here. Uh, we have companies that are able to provide access to uh, more than just banking data. I think a lot of companies are still figuring out what's the best way to productize the capabilities, the underlying capabilities that open finance makes available to third parties. Well, everyone with the industry is, is hoping that open finance will look like very much like the open banking today, that it's going to be regulated, that it's going to be free, um, that um, we'll have the regulator support uh, in, in helping to um, adopt the open finance technologies as opposed to the existing sort of uh, technologies where people are supposed to share their credentials. Open banking is going to revolutionize the way we bank. Um, it will take time because of market share distribution and uh, the stickiness of certain customers and customer behaviors. But we've seen it starting in payments. We're going to see it in every other product category. Um, it's only at the beginning. Potential main risks are, very, are probably going to be around consumer trust. So uh, consumers being comfortable sharing their data. The right uh, products still need to be developed holistically. Um, I think a lot of companies are dabbling or experimenting with the right way to package these open banking and open finance capabilities, but they're not quite there yet. A lot of consumer education needs to happen, uh, consumer awareness and education about how these services can improve their lives. And then last but not least, uh, the regulatory frameworks and international standards that govern open banking ideally would be a lot more coherent and interoperable as well. One of the big challenges is kind of getting that kind of foundation laid across all the banks and all the fintechs and making sure that consumers can kind of have a seamless experience. We'll face massive challenges in terms of regulations, controls, um, outsourcing, um, stability of value chains. Um, that's going to be a massive um, challenge for the providers and for the regulator. So today we have um, companies who do provide access to more than just banking data. Um, and these com uh, com companies are, are operating in a kind of an unregulated space. Um, what we really hope is that the regulation comes and comes pretty soon, um, asking the banks to um, open up um, more than just banking uh, data through the APIs. Um, and then in the meantime, the, the best thing we can do is just to rely on common sense and, and uh, you know, build uh, enough um, uh, security around these, these um, uh, uh, non-banking APIs um, so that people can, can understand how open finance works. And, and as we're going into regulated open finance, uh, people would have full confidence into this technology. The short answer is, is yes. Um, I would look at it less about, um, you know, banking for the unbanked, but more about giving people um, more control over their finances and being able to um, really... Uh, kind of have products and services that will enable them to make the, you know, better decisions. Straightforward answer, yes, it can. That's the only way. We can get anybody to understand their finances and therefore kind of 
uh, be more financially powerful as far as and anybody on the street, which I think is, I think which a lot of companies want to see. And I think a lot of users want to see, but I'm like, um, you know, I think a lot of people on the street, you know, it just used to be, am I in the black or the red? And now people are going, this is what your finances are saying. That's really easy to interpret. Um, and I think that's been brought about by open banking and, and in the future, open finance for sure. DRP payments, request to pay, all the payment initialization stuff using the faster payments routes is really interesting. And I think um, I think it's kind of makes us reassess like how we're approaching clearing. It really gives the power back to the end user, whether the end user is a consumer or a merchant. Um, I think that is a great way to redistribute value in the ecosystem. While traditional banks are changing at the speed they're changing, which is rather slow, um, open banking allows completely new uh, business models, completely new players with new ideas, um, delivering um, the promise to the customers. So I'm excited um, for, for uh, new participants really enriching and, and broadening the offering towards the customer. I think there are endless possibilities here. I, th I think what we need to be careful though is just, you know, not to run before we walk to make sure that we get things right and really um, bring the whole ecosystem with us. I think what's potentially happened in the past is that, you know, banks and TPPs are kind of, um, you know, not talking the same language as it were, but really it's about bringing the whole ecosystem up with us and everyone thinking this is in the interest of the you know the end consumer which is why we're all here open banking is is the equivalent to, to you know the, the excitement equivalent to to, to uh, crypto when web three technologies it's um it's the ability to do more with your bank accounts the ability to do, make your bank account smarter and and programmable um and i didn't think that's where the future of banking really is and we have to address the elephant in the room which is not the technology uh, it's the culture Open banking and open finance, it requires us as leaders to think differently, let go of processes. It's not just about technology, it's embracing a new way of thinking um, and remembering what our moms told us, uh, that sharing is caring. So sharing data actually means that you would be bringing in benefit to the entire uh, ecosystem and to every player in the ecosystem would benefit. So what excites me really is the future, which is going to be much more balanced and uh, much more connected. Yeah.